right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 5 of Star Trek Fenrir. For those unfamiliar, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in the year 2411 aboard a Cerberus class that is more or less uh, commanding all the ships in the Sabine Expanse. If you want to play catch up, you can find the VODs on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. I have two announcements this week. Uh, the first is that my newest game, Star Trek Mata Hari, uh, will have its session zero this coming Saturday. And if all goes well, we'll be streaming every other Saturday starting May 2nd. So please look forward to that. The other announcement is that I've actually switched podcast providers, which means you should still be able to get my content everywhere you could before, but now we're syndicating out to a whole lot more places. So, yay new viewers. Um, other thing I have to say before we do introductions is that uh, any support you can provide, uh, whether it's chatting and chat, following, sub, donation, bits, whatever, it's all greatly appreciated. Just make sure to take care of yourselves first. And uh, again, whoever does those bit bombs, I will find you eventually. Uh, with that said, let's just go around and have everyone do their introductions. So starting with you, John. Yes, hello. I am John from Seattle, Washington, um, living in my house, um, thanks to coronavirus. Uh, I play Rast, the um, XO of the starship, uh, half Romulan, half Betazoid, and I look forward to... Uh, playing today's game all right Matic. um i'm james uh most people know me as Matic through in this community um from houston texas uh i play john Matic, who is the temporal shenanigans loose cannon that doesn't apparently get in a lot of trouble all the time even though i think he should uh yeah pretty much all i got watney uh, I'm Watney. I play Commodore Brie Archuleta, recently promoted. Um, <clears throat> I am one of three co-hosts of Beyond Trek podcast, and you can find me at Watney at BTB. Dag? I am Dag. I'm from Sacramento, California. I play Fenrir's holographic Vulcan science officer, Vassar, and I am the third of three hosts for Beyond Trek podcast. And then we have Mr. Williams. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Aaron uh, from Prince Edward Island, Canada. I play RJ Williams, the chief of security for the USS Fenrir, a uh, human male in his mid-30s. Uh, and once again, as, as with last time, I'm one of the legions of listeners to the Beyond Track podcast. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Lee Tobin. Hi, I'm Matthew from Montreal, uh, Canada, and uh, I play Lieutenant Commander Lee, one of the uh, science officers on board the USS Fenrir. He is a uh, middle-aged, uh, intensely religious Bajoran. Very good. And with that, let's go ahead and run the intro.
right, and welcome back. So, uh, if you're new, something I like doing is having an opening monologue as read and prepared by the players. And tonight, we're going to have Mr. Maddock explain what he's been up to this entire time. So, Mr. Maddock, if you would be so kind. Uh, Chief Engineer, personal log, star dates 88608.5. Um, after having been returned by the great and so understanding and so wonderful and temporal investigative department of the illustrious 24th century without any technology this time because they checked um <clears throat> it seems that a couple interesting things have occurred to my crew uh while i was gone um it seems that we now are a fleet. There's several other ships involved with us. Uh, the captain's a Commodore. Um, and apparently we're chasing after a Ferengi vessel that has the Sean on it. Um, after this log and because apparently I stole some energy packs, which that means no sense. Um, I've noticed that Savia hasn't been around and it's i haven't seen or heard anything about any uh crew movements um i guess i have to speak to the captain whenever i get done getting disciplined for not stealing a bunch of power packs from williams um i'll deal with that whenever it comes to um in other news it's interesting to see beckett's daughter especially as a counselor knowing the two of them um I'm sure she has her actual very nice railgun locked away the past that i guess i gotta i guess i'm gonna head to their captain's office and see what the hell she means about me stealing some power packs end of vlog very good so we are actually going to immediately cut to the ready room where archuleta you're working on something when there's a chime at mm -hmm. your door <laughs> Come in. And in steps Mr. Maddock. Oh. Hi, Commander. <laughs> um, Come on in. <laughs> what's this about me stealing power packs? You tell me. You tell me. I was gone. I was pulled away by the Temporal Investigation Department before we ever reached DSD. I've been gone okay. for several days. She's going to sigh and touch her comm badge. Williams, where are you? Armory. Can you find your way to my ready room quickly? On the way. And of course... Rather than mediate this out, I figured you guys should just talk. I'll supervise. Yeah, and as, uh, as we know, turbo lifts work. Speed of plot, Williams is there not a moment later. He's just going to look at Maddox. You. Me what? Finally stopped ducking me, huh? What are you talking about? I just got back. 26. Type 2 phaser power packs. What would I possibly do with power packs? that I can't just replicate. Why would I take them? You tell me. You, you tell, tell me. me. My, my, my armory officer <laughs> says you came into the armory and, oh, forged my authorization to release the power packs and took them for an unspecified reason. No doubt some kind of weird Frankenstein machine you've got swirled away there, but I, I really need them back, or I need you to replicate me new ones. Commander, Commodore, I've been gone and pulled away by the Temporal Investigators Department since before we reached DSD. Here's the report from them specifically that shows, yes, I was gone. And he'll hand them both a uh, pad that says, uh, that basically says what he's saying. Um, but I guess we could talk about that in a second. Commodore, did you have my wife transported to another vessel or reassigned? 
Did I? For some reason? DM? Nope. Oh, um, <clears throat> so I'm not crazy. Uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Is she not on board? As far as I could tell, no, ma'am. I talked to the doctor, and the doctor said that she had assumed that Savia had gone with me whenever I stepped out. Computer, locate Savia Matic. Savia Matic is not aboard the Fenrir. When was the last time you saw her? Are you asking this to the computer or of Matic? No, I'm not. <laughs> well, Matic. <laughs> um, the last time I saw her would have been... I mean, we had lunch the day after, uh, you know, I shot a hole through the ship. But, um, I mean, she seemed off, but I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. A couple hours later, I was pulled away by the, you know, Temporal Investigators Department, but come back and her just being gone, like, they're... Um, she might have stayed too long on the station, and maybe she's still there. Um, Williams, do you remember her, like, offboarding for any reason? Like, any explanation from her? Well, with the blanket shore leave order, I wasn't really keeping that close of attention uh on, but oh, gm's raising his hand i'd like you williams to roll me an insight security please at a difficulty of one and you would have a focus for this one okay. look at that you start with two momentum williams Pull up on your pad, you start scrolling through the security logs, and it's the strangest thing. One moment, about uh, a week ago, about the same time Matic disappeared, Savia just vanished. There's no logs of any transporting. Your, your shuttles are all there. Her comm badge is missing. And... It's almost as if someone has literally plucked her in such a way that there's zero computer logs, which is extremely hard on a Starfleet ship because the comm badges and everything else log almost everything. Yeah, she's she's gone. And it wasn't that she offboarded the ship and never came back. She was aboard and then she just wasn't. Where was the Fenrir at that time? I would say you were somewhere between DSD and the uh, quote-unquote prison planet. Um, so you were probably about, I'm trying to do math in my head, about 75 light years out from DSD. We were in the middle of okay. deep space. Uh, GM, no no anomalous sensor readings in the area to belie say maybe a, a cloaked ship uh, or something that could have potentially plucked her out of the Fenrir while we you know while, while we were at warp reason security difficulty of two right. and again you would have a focus cool hmm. Uh, uh, would I be able to assist him by trying to see if, uh, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, this group, this group of aliens or this technology level may be able to have done this without us oh, noticing? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Well, had he not rolled uh, two complications. <laughs> oh. Get him out of the way early, folks. Oh, Ooh. boy. I'm going to take. Set the tone. Set the tone. <laughs> I'm going to take threat for those complications because I love having four extra threat. I can bring Yay. in a board diamond. Yay. Um, no, so Williams, you uh, you look at your logs and you're not seeing anything that would indicate cloak ships, subspace anomalies, nothing. It's just plain empty space. No subspace variants, no folds of subspace. No temple anomalies, no warp trails, 
What nothing. what time did your armory officer report seeing Maddock? Uh fourteen forty hours on start eight blue. Do whatever. you can you see the time frame in which Savia disappeared? Mm. Williams, it is the exact same moment. Same time. I mean, Mac, I know I told you if you ever lied to me again, I'd throw you, at, throw you out the airlock. So I'm taking you at your word here. Well, the thing the thing I don't understand is in the mirror universe, Savia was a doctor on a Borg vessel. I mean, uh, she, she wouldn't have access to even modern command codes or anything like that. I wonder if her to do what she'd done, somehow she would have had to have known your command codes or your level of knowledge of how the ship runs. How would she have gained that? Are you talking to Bree? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I know that face. I think she's guessed it. No, <laughs> I definitely <laughs> have not. <laughs> um, unless Savia like the, was a Shan or something. It seems like the Ashan. overwhelming uh, um, thing from the crowd is to yeet him. Yeet him out the airlock. <laughs> Holy crap, we're up eating, to like 300 Maddie. viewers. <laughs> Hi, 300 viewers. This I is just look over and I see yeet, 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 yeet. <laughs> um... So she would have had to have Bree's credentials to delete herself. Correct. Well, think about after I fired the hole through the ship and right after she saved me, you did transport her. Well, the Sean that was controlling you transported you. Do you have any recollection of another one just happened to come on at a certain split second before the Undine took yours out of you where it could stay hidden? No, I just tra are you talking about when you blew a hole in my bridge <laughs> and I transported her to the bridge with me and then right. I transported her to the brig with me. But I mean, we don't know how the Sean work. If it takes a second, just one second with you two near each other, that could have been all that was needed to. Oh, so she was exposed. But wouldn't there have to be two Sean? I mean, in order for her to maybe they can bring in others you gotta remember they are subspace entities that uh, it's hmm. if it's anything like how the opterans or the tzek were back in uh the shackleson expanse you know it's there are permanent rifts and then you have temporary rifts the, temp the temporary rifts are difficult to come by, and I'm sure they're difficult to mm. for something to maintain. But if you have an entire species that's based on using these small moments of time and rifts to take to hop across, it wouldn't surprise me if the Sean had a rift near the Demon class planet since they were using that. Um... So is our assumption here that Savia has been infected and that she somehow knew my credentials from being in my proximity and how the hive mind works? So did she steal the power packs? Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's got to be some kind of a connection between between that maybe, a, maybe some kind of hollow imaging trick or artifice uh does the armory officer where people go to get all this stuff is there any sort of recording system yeah we've got audio like visual a, and, and bio have, there's a visual what if we pull up the visual and run a backtrace on it see if the hollow emitters were operating at the same time and see if she was imitating me and forged your signature and all of that. Matic, 
I'd like you to roll me a reason engineering difficulty of one. Reason engineering. And ironically, power systems would actually apply here. Really? Mm-hmm. All right, two successes, which means you get a momentum. Oh, I rolled two 13s right after he rolled two 20s. This is not going to be good. Yeah, this is uh, this is ominous even. Uh, no, so what you find is that um, as you watch the image, there are subtle tells that it is one moment. Airplane flying overhead. Yes. Mm. Is this the Air Force preparing to take over? It's a mystery. I wonder if she took them to the station. Apologies for that. Apparently they have literally just started night ops, so I probably would be muting myself quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, though, uh, there are subtle tells as you watch yourself uh, go through the process of acquiring all the power packs. Uh, maybe a flicker of the uh, movement, like she moves her arm too quickly, or maybe there's something off about your beard. But it's very obvious to you that you're looking at someone inside a holographic display. So I guess that answers the question of who took the power packs. Yeah. Why? Williams, what to what ends could you use a power pack? Like in your wildest dreams. Uh I mean, phaser power packs are extremely adaptable and versatile. You can use them to power virtually anything on the ship in sufficient quantities. Uh, daisy chained together, they also make a fairly potent explosive. They do. It's 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 the experience they do. I know that Sean, we're working on a stellar engine of some kind. Maybe she left to go work on that. Um, I'm more concerned that. She has my captain credentials. Well, let's change your access codes. As a matter Before of fact, we I think do it... that, can you look in the system and see if they were used anywhere else? Mm. Yeah. GM, is, would that be a roll? Or can that would definitely it? be a roll. Because uh, I'm trying to give you guys momentum just in case we get to combat and you don't have any. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like you to roll me a uh, insight and either command or security. Uh, the difficulty on this will be a three. Uh, I am going to spend one of those momentum for an extra dice. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this instead. Uh, I am going to tap one of my values uh, to spend my point of determination. Mm -hmm. uh, the value I'm tapping is whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to roll my standard 2d6. Okay. 2d20, sorry. D6. I was playing a d6 system earlier. Yeah. And uh, let's see. I don't know that I would have any focuses that would apply here. Try me. Oh, let's see. Uh, could perhaps the ship's internal sensors be counted as uh, shipboard tactical systems? I'd allow it, yeah. All right, that is the three successes you need. Awesome. I'm trying to figure out how to put this. So you know how the ship does that whole multi-vector assault mode thing? No. There was, and you would have the ability to stop this from happening. At the next activation of multi-vector assault mode, there was a program implanted such that it would overload the fusion reactors that are powering the three ships' impulse reactors, which would have effectively knocked the entire section, each section of the ship, offline. Clever. It's like she's trying to hamstring us, Captain. Uh, By what? Can you tell me? Because I didn't read that. Uh, invasive program. Nasty little piece of code. Next time we hit MVAM, it's going to blow all of our impulse reactors. Um, is there a way we can reverse this? I mean, we, we did just could. like work to get Vassar back up and running 
with that antiviral <laughs> effort. So maybe we could. I'm sure given enough time, we yeah. could. But we could uh, probably use Vassar, seeing as he probably now has the antiviral program as part of his programming. He could be a, a much better and much more efficient version of it. I'm sure uh, Petty, Petty Officer uh, Zeke would be happy to help him as yeah, well. He was instrumental in getting him back online. What do you do, Dags? I've just seen the panic on Dags' face. Like, how do I do both at the same time? Uh, we I just would... love Zeke so much. <laughs> but I think okay, we this to... is not good. Uh, I... We need to find a way to revert that because if you know, I I think we might be running out of time. This is, I mean, how long ago was this installed? Uh, this was installed the same time Savia disappeared. So this is the same so time we were like at a ride ago. the entire time with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty ingeniously hidden. It's uh, coded as a diagnostic subroutine. Um, but I think I think we have a bigger problem. I think we have to assume that as long as there's one Shan aboard the vessel, they have the ability somehow at some interval to bring in others. We have to find a way to prevent that from happening. And I think that is a perfect segue into a scene with Rast, Vassar and Mr. Lee. And you all are currently in six aft along with a certain ambassador, Charlotte. Now, uh, you know, whether or not you're actually eating or if you're just simply here as a relaxation, uh, the conversation has been mostly about uh, what to do uh, should the Sean reappear on the vessel. And Ambassador Charlotte finishes a sentence that we catch midway and she finalizes and says, and that's why with this new site that I have, I can not have to do the whole, you know, smelling thing. I, I still can, but I figured it was kind of conspicuous when I went. So. And is it a more effective means of detecting the Shan, given your, uh, if you'll forgive me, Ambassador, uh, failure to identify the one that was possessing the captain? I've been thinking about that, and I have a theory, but I don't know how far-fetched it is. I think we'd all be happy to entertain it, whatever it might be. Yes, lay it on us. So, you all have the ability to project holograms, correct? You Anywhere on the ship, you could generate a hologram. Lee turns over and looks at uh, Vassar for a moment. Yes, Yes, we do. My understanding of holograms is that they are just projections of light and sometimes of matter. There is a substance that, if encased within, it would be impregnable, something uh, like a black box. If the captain had been in this black box being projected by your hollow emitters that's probably why I didn't detect it until those hollow emitters went offline or maybe they just forgot honestly I don't have a really good answer like I said it was a far-fetched theory to begin with well uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar is there anything that we might do to test the ambassador's theory we could attempt to replicate this black box speculation. Is there anything, Ambassador, that you're capable of detecting that is somewhat akin to the Sean, something that we could replicate and try to conceal using this black box method that you've described? She looks around at the three of you. Uh, which one are we going to be doing the test on? Well, uh, given that uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Vassar and I would be monitoring the tests, I think that it would only be reasonable for Commander Rast to be the uh, the test subject. Charlotte looks to you, Rast. Mm. <laughs> he just lets out a sigh. Okay. Uh, uh, sure. So, uh, Charlotte, 
uh, reaches up, plucks a hair of her white long hair, and just very carefully places it on Rast's shoulder. And she says, all right, it's not as the shame as Shaw, but since we're all from the same place, or the Sean, let's uh, let's try this black box. Uh, I can see it now. I can smell it now. Uh, let's see if uh, this works. Rast is twitching a little bit, like he really needs to remove this from his uniform. Mm-hmm. But he's holding back. <laughs> well, uh, Lieutenant Commander Brassar, you're far more skilled in the operation of holographic technology. Would you care to replicate the uh, ambassador's designs? Yep. So, uh, Dag, give me a control in science difficulty <laughs> of one. And you would have a focus for this one. Two successes. You're up to three momentum, I believe. So uh, you basically take what the ambassador said, put it into terms, and then project it onto Commander uh, Rast. And sure enough, Charlotte says, yeah, yeah, whatever you just did, I obviously can visually see it, but with the extra sight... I cannot. I also cannot smell it anymore. Well, it seems your theory wasn't nearly as far-fetched as you originally surmised. Thank you, Ambassador. Of course, this is a little unsettling, but... Hmm, I'm going to have to think about how to deal with that. Commander Rast, may I suggest then that we deactivate all the hollow emitters on the ship and transfer Vassar to his mobile emitter on a permanent basis until we can resolve the situation? Don't have to ask me twice. (laughs) He smiles at the idea of turning off all the holograms. Uh, Then I would do so. Alrighty. We'll coordinate the effort with engineering. Mm -hmm. Send a quick, just a quick message to the captain. Oh, by the way, we're turning off all the hollow emitters on the ship. Okay. It's, it's a Sean thing. She'd understand. And, and with that, he pulls the hair off and, like, offers it back to the uh, to the uh, to the ambassador. And uh, she smiles, takes it, and does the strangest thing. She actually brings it right back up to her scalp, and there's a little like spark, and it refuses with the cuticle there. Just because I think that's cool. Nice. But uh, we are actually going to skip ahead a bit because we are sort of on the same timeline, quote unquote. So I think it's it's probably good that we get all of you in the same room because I also think Williams has some words about uh, the ship you're about to be uh, interfacing with or dealing with. So we are going to cut to the ready room where or not the ready room, sorry, the conference room where you are all piled in. Let's see, there's Rast, and then there's Matic. So yeah, senior staff meeting, staple of the Star Trek series. Feel free to take it away. Uh, So we've learned that there is, has been installed code in our system that once we leave or once we engage multi-vector mode our each section will be powered offline given the fact that Savia disappeared from the Fenrir onto an undetectable vessel I assume I am not so keen on leaving this code as long as we can in here I want it out so that's my priority number one it could be next to us. I mean, we have no idea. Williams, do you have any ideas on how to get this out? Honestly, I think that I think that uh, Petty Officer Zeke in concert with Vassar should be able to purge this malicious code from the system. Um, 
Because we may very well need multi-vector assault mode if there's a confrontation with this Ferengi ship. It is large. It's designated as a freighter, but it's uh, actually a retrofitted um, U.S. class mobile cruiser. Um, for any history buffs in the room, mm. they were the initial production run was the late 23rd century. They're mobile marketplaces and light industrial centers. They can have a crew up to 5,000. Oh, okay. Um, it's got, judging from the research I've done in the registry, each one possesses four warp cores and 18 impulse arrays. Um, if we can knock out one of those, though, it'll prevent the ship from going to warp. But if they're already in warp, then they only need two to sustain it. Uh, but that's not the part I'm most concerned with. Like all Ferengi vessels at close range, it does have... Um, a Ferengi energy dampening weapon. Um, and at longer ranges, it does have phasers and photon torpedoes. So if we do have to engage this thing, we may very well need the additional maneuverability of MVAM. Given our recent experiences with that Ferengi energy dampening weapon, we might be able to develop some kind of countermeasure. We could modulate the shields with some kind of inverse energy pulse to uh, allow us to actually negate its dampening effects. Yeah, if we couldn't negate it, we could at least perhaps mitigate it. Hmm. Prevent it from, be cripple from being crippling. How quickly can you get something like that online? We can mock up some tests in one of the science labs and run some simulation. Could take hours, could take upwards of a day or two. How far are we out from where we know the location of, or our coordinates? The coordinates where you are projected to intercept the vessel, the latinum's lure, you have two, three hours at best. I guess you better work fast then. So mm -hmm. we're probably going to have to hit this from a couple of different angles. We'll need one team to work on the malicious code. We'll need another to see if we can develop a countermeasure. Yeah, I think the code is priority number one. I can take the initiative to isolate and purge the malicious code, Commodore. Uh, you can still call me Captain Vissar. Yes, Captain. And I don't think we should rule out the possibility of other nasty surprises. Could be something a little more, uh, a little more tangible than malicious code with those phasers, poton, or power packs. We could be Williams looking. because I think they're still fate. on board. Let me, let me finish that. Williams, uh, <laughs> since you're, what you're, you're tempting fate here, go ahead and roll me a challenge die. You do not no. want to see an effect. No. Boom. Okay. I'm going to spend threat to have it happen anyway. Oh, oh, shit. You're having a lovely senior staff meeting. And then something begins to materialize on the table. What? It's a quantum torpedo. It's oh, beeping. Wow. It is Good. armed. What do you do? How? Uh, Matic to Zeke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matic to Zeke. Priority one transport quantum torpedo in uh, Carfritz Lab. Put it anywhere else outside of the ship. Hey, hey, hey! Drop a drop a badge on it. I can beam it out of from the badge. Uh, Matic will take his badge and put it on the quantum torpedo. And okay. Zeke will attempt to get a lock on the badge and beam up anything within the dimensions of a quantum torpedo surrounding it, possibly including part of the table. So, Zeke, you try to do that. You cannot get a lock because a force field has enveloped the conference room. Oh, uh, Commander, I... there's a force field around the conference room. I can't do anything. I got no lock. Get out of there. How can we get out of here? There's a force field. My That's, okay. Yes. My new credentials. Can I override that? You certainly can try. 
Okay. Uh, computer, this is uh, this is the Commodore. I'm overriding the force field. Um, Archuleta Delta Delta Niner 87. Okay. I'd like you to roll me a presence and a command difficulty of four. And I would say the ship could assist you with a computers and a security. So if someone wants to grab the ship. Why don't you guys go ahead and roll that? My luck's not great tonight. Um, Starfleet protocol? Yeah, that would definitely apply. Yes. Can I buy a momentum? Sure, how much you want. Or buy a buy an extra die. I know what you mean. Um, Just buy a bow. Uh, you have three have? at the moment. Okay. You could go ahead and spend all three to get two dice, or go ahead and be like uh, Williams and spend your determination, or... Yeah, I'll do determination and one dice. Okay, so that will be uh, two momentum spend then. Uh, what value are you tapping for this? Um, emotion in a crisis only makes things worse. I like it. And how much dice do I roll? Uh, you are rolling three dice. Okay. Very nice. That is a grand total of seven successes. So you get three momentum. Yeah. So apparently whatever this Easter egg was, it was not prepared to deal with an admiral level code. Because immediately the force fields that are, you know, sort of keeping you from the doors deactivate and the doors all open. And Zeke, the force field around the the uh, conference room has disappeared. The torpedo, not so much. It's still there. Hey, I got signal again. I'm going to try something. And try it. Uh, I'll go and do uh, transporter foo. All right. So you, uh, I'm going to let this happen Please. for free. But uh, where are you, where is Zeke going to transport it? Outside the ship somewhere? or uh, To the limit of the transporter's range away from the ship. All right. So we sort of see an external shot of the Fenrir and then uh, appearing at the very aft of the ship, maybe hundreds, if not thousands of uh, kilometers back, uh, a quantum torpedo materializes. And since you're at warp, you very quickly fall away from it. And the torpedo detonates and doesn't affect you in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, so she's Everybody still... Everybody okay up there? Hello? Well, that was harrowing. Oh, no. You Zeke, didn't hear, you just, Fine, you didn't hear boom, did you, Zeke? I want to no. over, override. Oh, oh, Commodore. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Woo. Oh. I... I'm going to go back to this transporter now. Cheers. Okay. I want to, Williams, I want you to um, purge my authorization, captain authorization codes from the system. And, Understood. Um, and with your permission, I'm going to have my security teams perform a deck by deck search. Yeah. Look for, look for uh, power packs, would you? Yeah. That's what I was, that's what I was going for. Um, Williams, is there a way that we could look up the, look up any sort of, uh, log to see if anybody else from the ship disappeared since, or around the same time as Savia? Yeah. yeah to that's... see if, you know, other pull... command codes may have been compromised, ours? Yeah, I mean, we can pull the, uh, well, she has mine for sure. So I think it's safe to assume that all senior staff members should have reissued security codes. And I'd recommend that we lock out command level functions from anywhere other than the bridge or engineering. How do you feel about that, Matic? I mean... Oh, or, or engineering, including engineering. Yeah, well, that yeah. sounds like a good idea. Um... They could easily just transport another one on the same table right now, unless we figure out how they did this, because our shields are up. Well, now no, you're at warp, so. The oh, they're not. They're not. Lives. They're not. Never mind. 
analysis of the internal transporter logs may detect uh, where perhaps on the ship someone beamed a quantum torpedo into the observation lounge. We would need to check with the existing quantum torpedo inventory to make sure that uh, our stocks are full or if one is missing. The Tsar, the... I'd like you to roll me a insight science, please. Because you're connected with the ship, it's very easy for you to look up this information. Difficulty of zero. We should also have four momentum. momentum from that last roll. Yep, you should be at four momentum. Uh, would this be considered cybersecurity? It would. And I I will spend one momentum for one dice. Okay. All right, that's three successes, which I believe caps you on momentum. Yeah, Vassar, you're missing one quantum torpedo. Came from the Fenrir. In fact, Is there... oh, sorry. Captain, my analysis of the quantum torpedo inventory is true. There is one quantum torpedo missing. Whoever beamed it is perhaps still on the ship. Can you localize what the command? console was that command typed at? Processing. Vassar, uh, or should I say DAG, you already know the answer. <gasps> no, not Zeke. What? <laughs> it's a shell game. It's been a shell game this whole time. Oh my god. It, it appears the transporter command came from Petty Officer Zeke's console. Uh, Rash, you'll feel this, and anybody looking at Medic will uh, kind of uh, feel it. Um, he goes really cold, um, and he just kind of looks at the captain and I warned you about the Gor I warned you about Gorn and Orions and anything else that's green. I'll handle my engineer. Pardon and then he'll me, just wa he'll walk out. Commander, if you would give yeah. us a moment, no. it is highly unlikely that Petty Officer Zeke beamed a torpedo to the observation lounge, specifically to beam it away again a moment later. The more logical option is that the command was routed through Petty Officer Zeke's transporter console from well, another place on the ship. If that's the case, the power drain on the transporter system, could that could that also be obfuscated, or could we back that somehow? Williams, I'd like you to roll me an insight security difficulty of three. Oh. You said backtrace. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of that uh, that old meme. Uh, dad. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spend three of our momentum. Three of the momentum. All right. All right. Look at that. You uh, go down to four momentum, but uh, that is enough successes. So, uh, yeah, Williams. It is what Vassar said. It was not Zeke that actually did the code. So, whew, there. Um, but it was definitely routed through his uh, console as another part of this Easter egg program. In fact, the more you look at the code again, it's not just multi-vector assault mode that's been affected. The transporter was scheduled to literally, if the multi-vector never happened by a certain time. It was designed to transport quantum torpedoes to specific areas of the ship to cripple it. I'm going to communicate that to the crew. Let's see, we need to... The SAR will tap into internal sensors to see if there are any other quantum torpedoes missing from the inventory, and if so, to try and detect them in other places on the ship. The good news, there are no other torpedoes where they should not be. Uh, Williams, do you want to set up, I can route, uh, power off of an adjacent system to where it comes in uninterrupted. Um, we could put a force field around the, uh, inventory of quantum torpedoes until we either deal with this program or until we fire all of them, basically. I mean, it, the force field won't do much, but 
it would it would be able to stop transporters from just pulling them out. Last thing we need is to be in the middle of combat, and all of a sudden I'm looking at a quantum torpedo at the warp port. In addition to that, you may wish to manually disengage the transporter initiators all over the ship so that they cannot be used in this fashion once again. I'll just have Zeke overload the system. We can always repair it. You're the engineer. I mean, but. Before we do anything, shouldn't we ascertain if there are any countermeasures that have been put in place to prevent us from attempting to circumvent this programming? Who knows what the ship might begin to do if we begin to interfere with the programs or the booby traps that have been left behind. I can attempt to, like I said before, I can attempt to isolate the malicious activities of the code and determine what countermeasures may be in place. But I will probably need to join Commander Matic in main engineering to have a better interface. Um, the overall code that you could tell now, are, are you able to see if it's just code that was most likely implemented with Savia, or if we have other saboteurs? If you give me a momentum, I will answer that question. So what you, what you learn is that this was done by someone with a far greater knowledge, not only of the, the Fenrir, but of Starfleet protocol in general. This was, to put it in, a, in what might be a red herring sort of way, this is something that you would expect out of the Tal Shiar or Section 31. Like, this is so high level that there's no way in hell that Savia herself did this. Vassar will check to see if the command codes uh, to the prefix code have been compromised. They have Using been. Neural. Okay. And in Captain. fact, since you did check, Vassar, now yeah. that you see that, you see that had you tried to use the prefix codes for anything on any ship, the Fenrir's warp core would have overloaded. Captain, I just did a rudimentary scan of our prefix code, and it appears to have been compromised. Uh, not only that, but would you had follow? Would we have used our prefix code to shut down the Okita when it was compromised? Our warp core would have immediately gone. Um, Is there a way of... to revert the system to a previous state at all? Uh, Restore from backup. Turn it off. Turn it back on. I would say it would be an extended task, and I think that's where we're driving towards, is there's two things that need to happen here. Um, we need to have Vassar and Matic get rid of the malicious code, and then Williams needs to deal with the security matters on the ship. Um, so let's do that. Let's let's figure out those extended tasks, because I think that's going to be very important. Um, so as I said, you have about two hours before you will get within sensor range of the Latinum's lure, or so you hope. Um, so what this is going to be is this is going to be two extended tasks. And I'm just going to put us on theater of the mind for the moment. So uh, let's see. So for Matic, we'll start with you and Vassar. Uh, your work track is going to be out of a 14. Your magnitude will be a 4. Your resistance will be a 2. And the difficulty will start also at a four now this is important because one interv one interval of time or one attempt at this will take one hour unless you spend one momentum prior to doing the rolling to make that half the interval mm. how much momentum do we currently have this is why you wanted us to have uh, three, three. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay we can afford that. All right. Give him a whole bunch of threat for extra dice. Is this a? Uh, oh right, I didn't even tell you what the task was. Duh. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a daring and engineering for Matic and a daring science for Vassar. Um. Let's see. 
daring science it would be for me. Yes. So is one assisting the other or both leading the role? Uh, you would, one of you is assisting the other. Uh, do you want to assist me? Because I have I'm, talents that will boost up a bunch of stuff if we can get stuff done. I would be satisfied assisting you, Commander. Um, alien technology or quantum mechanics, seeing as the high levels that the computers have to run out now? I'm going to say no. It's the first time I'm saying no, but I'm going to say no. Aww. And am I correct in assuming that focuses do not apply for assists? No, they do. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Cybersecurity still, then. Yes. Daring. Are you <clears throat> giving up momentum or threat for this? Um, let's say one momentum to uh, keep the time low. Okay. And then I'll give you... I'll give you three threat for two dice. Okay. So then that still leaves us with two momentum to play with. I await your roll. Survey says, well, there's three successes. All right. Fortunate. So unless you uh, have a way to re-roll here, you're not going to make any progress. Um... ship can't assist at all <laughs> no nah, unfortunately not because it's the ship itself your ship itself you're fixing i already used my use determination a, too can we use a momentum uh no the only way to reroll dice is via a talent or determination um i'll spend my determination um i know i can complete my objectives okay how many dice are you rerolling? uh Honestly, I would say just the one that I got the zero on. Can I say that Vas can Vasar re-roll from my determination spin as well? Uh, no, it's only your rolls. Oh, and some threat. Give give him some. No, you can't Dude, give me threat to re-roll more dice. Oh, that's right. I I can either re-roll one dice or all four of them. Mm -hmm. Um. Reroll the one. Yeah, I'll just reroll the one. I could also spend my determination. Every problem has a solution. Actually, assisting characters cannot determinate. Okay. But good thought. Oh, this is very tense. Oh. Hey, all right, there you go. Woo. So you actually get a point of momentum back. So yeah, Matic, I need you to roll me seven challenge dice, please. We did it. Challenge dice. Well done, Seven. Good job. Uh, I want to spend a momentum and reroll those two zeros. Okay. Okay, so that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two effects is nine work. I achieved a breakthrough with one of my talents. I now have two breakthroughs accomplished with the nine work completed. Uh, you mean ten because you have two effects. Two, three, four, five, six. Eight. F. Nine. Yeah, it's 10. All right. Okay, 10. Yeah, so after resistance, that goes down to eight work, but that is enough to uh, get some work done. And you have Miracle Worker, right? Yes. Thought so. So, yeah, uh, you actually make great strides in removing this malicious code. Uh, I'm going to say it is in part not only to Maddox's skill at detecting such things, because I think I pulled the same trick on the Arcadia at least twice. Um, but also because Vassar is there with his uh, quote-unquote effective antivirus. Um, so yeah, you have officially 1.5 intervals remaining uh, before you would run out of time. So I have a question for you regarding these two extended tasks. Yes. Um, so like, okay, basically we have the two intervals, or if we spend momentum, we have technically four intervals. Correct. What inter whatever intervals we don't use, like if it takes us all two hours to do this, does that mean Williams doesn't get to do his or is his simultaneous as ours? His is simultaneous and he's using the same momentum pool as you. So just keep that in mind. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I guess we'll go again and do this Dang, again. You're muted. I was just saying, mm-hmm. do we flash to William's attempts now? But uh, if we are going to go again, I'm. I mean, do we, do we want to do we want to get rid of this to get this done and over with, or do we want to hop over to him? I'd say get this out of the way, and then that just uh, I'll just go nuts on the rest of the. All movie. right. So. Uh, guess I'll lead again. Yep, same rolls as before. Um. I think it would be best to just buy one extra die and ignore the uh, reduction in the interval. I was just going to give him threat and roll all five to try to get as much momentum for Williams because he's having to solo it versus me having help. I would say Rast would probably assist yeah, Williams. Good. I think this is a Rast right. assist type thing. Um, so I'm going to give you one momentum to... or yeah, I'll give you one momentum for the time. Okay. Then... Um, what, that's one, two, three, six threat? Mm-hmm. Guys, we got to drag out all as much time as we can Shit. so we don't have to do combat until next week. <laughs> <laughs> no applicable focuses. In uh, before all complications. That's quite a number of successes. Eight. Wow. So that's... Oh. Wow, that is... Yeah, that's eight successes. <laughs> so you get uh, six momentum, which means you have one floating. Perfect. Could we create an advantage that might assist Williams in his operations in the next extended task? Yes, but you have to tell me what it is. Uh, so, okay, what exactly is it that Williams is doing? Uh, he is redoing all of the command codes for the senior staff and wiping out any programs that relied on those old codes. Okay. So what I would say is with the with two momentum, um, because we were able to eliminate and we were basically able to understand how this code worked and affected the ship and its systems, mm-hmm. um, it could, by knowing like, hey, look for this string, um, or look for this hex binary or look for this uh, digital signature. Mm-hmm. And then with using that, he could it would he could uh, use the computer to assist him in narrowing down just those programs so he can just delete and then reboot. Yeah, I like it. So yeah, that means that when we go to uh, Williams and Rast. Okay. Yeah, but let's see uh, let's see your work done first. Make sure that you do complete this. Seven. I mean, that's six with the resistance of two would make it four. Mm -hmm. That's all we need, isn't it? Yeah, you really, because you have Miracle Worker, you only need to do one breakthrough. So do I need to do another breakthrough or no? Well, you would have to give me a momentum to uh, get rid of the resistance. I'll just give you a momentum to reroll those four dice. That well, that works too. Yeah, that is enough. Uh, yeah. So yeah, again, Vassar and Matic, uh, working as masters of uh, code foo, um, you are able to successfully purge everything that need be. Uh, prior to your arrival with the Latinum's Lure. So it's at this point we're going to cut to Williams and Rast. Uh, You two are working on something similar uh, in importance. Now your extended task, because of that advantage, is going to be a little bit easier. You are going to start at only a difficulty of three and a work track of 12. Um, your task for this will be a daring and a security from the both of you. Okay. And um, Commander Ras, would you like to assist? Yeah, I'll do the assist. Um, can, since we're Am I able to use espionage for this? Yeah, I'd allow it. I figured it was a decent, uh, a decent one. Yeah, and um, because Rast and I are working together on this, would my focus in team dynamics apply? 
yeah, I'd let it happen. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and buy um, one point uh, or one one die uh, for a point of momentum. Okay. Uh, I'd also like to spend another point of momentum to reduce the interval by half. Got it. And daring. And applicable focuses, yes. Wow. Wow. That is uh five successes from William, so you get And this two isn't momentum. a this isn't a conflict, is it? No, it is not. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you're up to four momentum again, and yeah, Williams, roll me seven challenge dice, please. Very um, nice. Could I, could I spend a point of momentum to to reroll that zero? Uh, you could, but it might be a more effective spend to get rid of the two resistance. Then let's do mm -hmm. that. Alrighty. So you go down to three momentum, and yeah, you and uh, Rast are a dynamic duo, as it were. Uh, you are working in tandem to the point that uh, if you didn't know any better, you might be linked at the mind. Uh, but what it comes down to is you have gotten most of the old captain command codes out of the way. It's just a matter of the lower ranking officers now. Um, so right now, uh, you are looking at a difficulty of two for the what might be last roll before we get to the Latinum's Lure. Uh, okay, well, let's, uh, I'm going to issue uh, decreasing the interval, Okay. Uh, and I will spend uh, a point of momentum for an extra die. Okay. Oh, Ooh, Lord. complication. Well, you do get the requisite number of successes, and I believe you're now at two momentum overall. So there is going to be a complication, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay. Would you like me to roll my challenge dice again? Yes, please. I think we're at three momentum there. Um, is it a difficulty two task? Right. Oh, but yeah, he, Russ. He spent two you were at three but you spent two one for the interval one for the extra dice you were at one and then you just got three successes and it's difficulty two so you would be at two i think he said he eschewed uh, decreasing the interval oh i must have misheard then then yes you would be at a three okay um and if i it, would i need to decrease the resistance on this roll as well um in order to succeed yes you would need to either do that or reroll the zeros uh, no, I'm just going to go ahead and spend the point of momentum to reduce the resistance. Yeah, right. that's, the that's the guaranteed the, result. That's the clincher. All righty. So uh, by the time the Latinum's Lure is within sensor range, all of you have completed your tasks uh, to the best of your knowledge. Keyword there. But we're going to now cut to the bridge as all of you report to your stations and begin to uh, look at the Latinum's Lure that is on the view screen. Now, uh, as Commander Williams has alluded to, the Latinum's Lure is an older style uh, Ferengi vessel. Uh, now, normally their vessels are sort of these crescent moons that have a almost like a two-pronged fork that comes out of the uh, apex of the circle. Um, but this one looks more like someone took a Decora class and flattened it out. Uh, it's a very long ship and a very wide ship, but not very tall. Um, just looking at it on the screen, it's at least a kilometer wide and at least a kilometer long. It's big. Um, and they're actually hailing you, Commodore. Um... Real quick, can I have a point of order? Sure. Uh, I think that because of everything that's been going on, uh, Matic would stay in engineering. Stay in engineering. All right. We will have you stay in engineering. But yeah, Captain, okay. there's an incoming hail. Uh, on screen. And appearing on screen is a daemon by the looks of him. And he says... Ah, hello, Starfleet. This is Damon Takis. How might I be of assistance? 
Well, we uh, picked up a uh, your signal, and we came to see if you needed help. He sort of looks at you a little bit oddly, and he says, Help? But with what? Well, you are dangerously close to the Breen Confederacy. We are headed there on a trade run. Okay. Um... I mean, Ferengi rule of acquisition 62, the riskier the road, the greater the profit. Yes, yes. Um, one of our crewmen went missing a few weeks ago. And if we were to request a scan of your vessel, would you mind? We are not in Starfleet space, so I would decline. And Commander Rast, mm -hmm. I'd like you to roll me an insight and command, please. Difficulty of two. I was just about to ask you whether or not I could feel him even though he was Fringy. Yeah, I was going to say. So you can't feel him, but your people knowledge, people reading, as it were, mm -hmm. will still come into play here. All right. What was the roll again? Sorry. Uh, an insight and a command difficulty of two. I'll spend a momentum. Okay. Two successes is all you need. He's hiding something. Like, he... That might be obvious, but he's not hiding the cargo, per se. He got more anxious when uh, Archuleta mentioned a missing crew member than he did about the scan. So, um, by this point, Rast has already, if it doesn't exist, there's a little panel that he can basically send text messages to. Yeah, I, I would say. And the captain's <laughs> chair has, yeah. like, a flip-up panel that only they can see. Yeah, and he will, uh, he will send that over. That he's... He, he became anxious, not about his cargo, but about a potential missing crew member. Okay. Um, what's his name? Damon what did he say? Takis. Damon Takis. Where are you... Um, where are you traveling from? We are coming from your deep space Daedalus. And uh, how many people are on your crew? We have quite a number aboard. I thought you were on a trade run. We are. And there's no passengers aboard. Oh no, there's quite a number of passengers. And Any bizarre Andorians? cross reference. Sorry, I was going to say, ask if Vassar can cross-reference DSD's uh, shipping uh, schedule to see if the ship actually did uh, dock at DSD for any amount of time, and if that time corresponds to uh, Savia's departure. And Savia is Andorian, right? Yep. Okay. I also have a message to send over the captain by text message. Well. Ooh, a popular. Yeah. <laughs> Take our tricorders and text <laughs> message everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Vassar, uh, I'm going to say yes, they did actually dock with DSD, and they did actually take on some passengers there. So that, that checks it, out. The timestamp, does it overlap with Savio's departure of Fenrir? It does. I have a text message for the captain as well. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. Okay. Um, did Lee have something too? Yes, I would have sent you a message suggesting that you indicate to them that a uh, there was a viral outbreak on board uh, Deep Space Daedalus, and that Starfleet has dispatched us in order to investigate all the various vessels that have docked with the station over the past while. Uh, so we might be able to cite Starfleet regulations regarding shipping. X01-3 or something to that effect <laughs> and uh, ask him to allow us to board his vessel to conduct medical scans. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so um, she'll have muted for a second mm -hmm. and conferred a little bit. 
and then she'll turn back. Um, Damon, we uh, we come from Deep Space Daedalus 2, and uh, we were to inform you that there was a medical situation aboard the station, um, and any ships that have docked recently might be compromised. So we are here to assist you with um, any medical anomalies you might be experiencing. Roll me a presence and command uh, if you have something like deception or subterfuge. Uh, that would apply here. Uh, I'm going to make this okay. with some threat. I'm going to make this a difficulty of five. Presence command. Yep. I want uh, to... Can, can Rast assist with a statement? Tell me, yeah, what what is this statement? All, all, this, uh, all these services, of course, will be free, and we will also uh, check any of your crewmates for any existing conditions that they might have uh, need of Starfleet medical assistance on. Sure, yeah. Rast, you can also do a uh, Presence Command Assist. I want to use a momentum. Okay. And I have composure in Starfleet protocols. I'll give you composure. Okay. That's three successes. That's four successes. Close, but not quite. Like, at the mention of free, there's sort of a spark in the Frangie's eyes. But then he starts to think about it and says... I believe, Frangi rule of acquisition number 23, nothing is more important than your health, except for your money. Oh, and... wait. Ooh. Enhanced presence on Watney. You're right. Oh, so, what? You're right, because you have augmented presence, so you automatically mm -hmm. get a success. But, what is that zero? Am I re-rolling? No, no, no. You're one of your zero zeros. Zero is a 17. Which I think falls within the range of augmented presence. Yep. So, so you do succeed, but there is a complication. And then does uh, <clears throat> augmented work on assist? I believe it does, yes. So you actually All get right. a point of momentum Then we back. have an extra, yep. Okay, yeah, good catch there. I keep forgetting about uh, both your augmented presence. Mm. Um, so you do succeed, and the daemon says, well, uh, rule of acquisition number 23, nothing is more important than your health except for your money. And if you are offering these services for free... How can I turn them? And he's mid-sentence. I'm spending two threat. From off screen, there is a phaser shot. And the beam hits the daemon in the head. He falls over. <laughs> and appearing on the screen is someone you don't want to see. Specifically, Ew. Miss Savia Matic. And she says... Well, now look what you made me do, Captain, or as a Commodore now. I had to go and shoot a perfectly good Ferengi. <laughs> well, good um, Savia, or whoever you are, um, you'll be pleased to know that we found your little booby traps hmm. and perched them. Did you get so, rid of the one in Maddox's quarters? <laughs> no. Then I'm just going to push this shiny button right here. Matic, what do you keep in your quarters? <laughs> uh, Don't say flammable alcohol. <laughs> alcohol, prototype weaponry, um, prototype engineering stuff, uh, maybe some temporal mm. bullshit. A lot of stuff that he'd get rid of a lot of different ways for. Would Vassar's neural interface detect a buildup of anything that could threaten the ship? Oh yeah, there is a massive power surge in Maddox's quarters. Uh, would Maddox see that in engineering? He would, but what I would say is that depending on who acts first here, um, you're only going to get one shot. So between Vassar and Maddox, you have one shot to stop this from happening. If you had one shot. And one opportunity. <laughs> Uh, what are the, Getty. so Vassar's would... plan is going to be 
his plan would be, okay, there's a buildup of something that's leading something bad. What are the life signs in that area? And can he erect uh, a level 10 force field fast enough to prevent bodily injury to anybody in that area? That would be his first concern. Sorry about your equipment, Matic, but you know, people. I can make more. It gets rid um, of the evidence. For, uh, I guess, for what Matic would try to do. Um, are we still at warp or have we come to a stop? Uh, you are out of warp, but your shields are not currently up because red alert has not been called for or yellow alert even. Okay. Um, knowing the tech he has there, Matic would try, would probably try to uh, either erect a force field or um, even attempt to transport the materials off the ship to see if it'll lose connect to see if it'll lose connection or if uh no he'd, he'd probably he'd probably try to erect a force field as well okay then yeah that's what's gonna happen and uh i would say that one of you again selects uh which one of you is going to be doing this but this is going to be a control and engineering difficulty of three What's your engineering app, Asar? Uh, I have a, a 10 and a 4. I have, what, you said a control? Mm -hmm. I have a control of 10. Yeah, so I have a 12 and 5. Okay. Um, Power systems would ironically apply here. <laughs> well, no, oh, okay, well, yeah, I mean, besides that applying, I was going to ask for prototype engineering. Have to uh, try to make the force field react to all the fun stuff he has. I have threat. I'm going to increase the complication range. The what? 18 to 20. Okay. I'd throw an extra uh, die in there. What's the diff difficulty? Is three? Difficulty is three. <laughs> and we have three momentum? Mm hmm. Actually, wait a second. You're rolling against a 17, so I'll spend one more threat to make the complication. If you don't succeed, you get complications. Um, so there's no assist on this. It's one or the other, right? So let me spend our last three momentum to get the uh, two more dice. Because this could be bad. Put in the combat dry. Here we go. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> we've 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 been through worse. We'll we'll be through worse. In before complications. Well, there's one complication. Oh boy. So I'm going to say you do succeed. A force field is erected, and you do get a point of momentum. But. A lot of things still explode, and the force fields do a moderately good job of containing the explosion and, like Vassar suggested, keeping people in that area from harm. However, you are going to suffer a breach to one of the random systems, and I'm going to roll to see what system just gets hit. Oh, oh boy. Your oh, communications William. die instantly. <laughs> As sparks shoot out of Williams's console, Williams, you're fine. You just have to go. Whoa! Uh, but your communications go dead. Would such uh, an action trigger an automatic yellow or red alert on the ship? Yes, it would automatically take us to red alert. And so, like, I can't even communicate with the bridge right now, or like. Communications across the ship, I believe, are currently disabled. Let me double check. But on um, on the bridge, Vassar will report to the captain. We've experienced a breach in Commander Maddox's quarters. Communications are down. Thank you. Shields up. Yep. While I have the the floor. <laughs> and yeah, we are uh. <laughs> gonna actually cut to this screen. As the massive Matinum's Lure, Latinum's Boy, Lure swear things, is going to turn around and start heading in your direction. And that's where we're going to take our break. 
So we will be back in approximately Morning, 10 minutes. Everybody stick around.
right, and welcome back, everyone, to part two of season two, episode five. If you missed the first half, you missed the Fenrir crew finding a lot of fun Easter eggs and a not so fun Easter egg, quote unquote, of uh, Savia Maddock, Commander Maddox's wife, apparently getting taken over by a Sean and ending up on the Ferengi ship Latinum's Lure who then proceeded to potentially kill or stun the daemon in charge. And now the Fenrir crew finds themselves in a uh, combat scenario. So, Fenrir crew, you have six actions, one for each of you. What would you like to do? Who would like to go first? I'll go first. I would like to see what my neural interface damage is. Ah, yes. So, Dag, since you were connected to the ship... I do get to roll three challenge dice here. You're fine. You only take two stress oh. worth of damage. All right, good. Momentary so flicker. Vassar so momentarily f flickers as uh, systems surrounding his neural interface uh, go offline as the explosion in Maddox quarters uh, takes out that area. But the emitter resolves it. Mm -hmm. So, Captain, you wanted to act first. Yeah, I get to rally, right? You can. You can rally, and that is a presence command, and you just have to say something inspiring. Okay. Um, do I roll first? Uh, it's a present command, difficulty zero, so yeah, I would say roll first just in case you roll okay. complications. Jesus, let's hope not. Hey, three successes. That's three cool. momentum. Um, all hands, this is the captain. Ready your station. Seal all emergency bulkheads and prepare to engage the enemy. Love it. All right. Now, Williams, you have quick to action, correct? Yes. Would you like to use it? Yes. Who else would like to who else would like to go? Maybe a scan for weakness? Uh that's what Vassar might initiate. A scan for weakness. Okay. Then Vassar. Um, what I would say is that would require a, you think as much as I've done this, I'd remember it, but you know, it's reason science and with sensor security. Thank you. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yes. And that would be if at close range, it's currently at medium range. Uh, so this is a difficulty of two. A reason science. Actually, no, sorry. It is a control science. Okay. Or at least so my PDF says. Control science. Uh, with, uh, you said a, a security or something like that? Uh, ship is sensor security. The ship is rolling sensor security. Correct. Uh, can uh, uh, Matthew, can you roll that? Uh, for the ship? Yes. Yep. Sensor security. All right, there's uh, one assist from the ship. I have a cyber security, no? Nah, not for this one. Okay. Hey, that's two successes. So you're at three, yep. you get a point of momentum right back. And yeah, Vassar, you find a potential structural weakness. Uh, the shield emitters on the uh, port side of the ship are a little bit weaker than the other ones. So you think if you shoot there, you might get a little bit extra damage in. Andrew Williams, the shields on the, you say port side? ELH, you said port side? Yes. Sorry. That side. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, Commander Williams, the port side shield emitters show a variance that makes them susceptible to attack. Understood. And yeah, uh, do you want to do anything else on your turn, Dag? Um, you can do have... a minor action to restore something. <laughs> I will dedicate the remainder of my action to restoring communications. Then communications come back up across the ship. However, it is now the Ferengi's turn, the Latinum Lure's turn. Latin, I picked two L's. Of course I did that to myself. So what they're actually going to do is they are simply going to fire a uh, phaser, let's say a phaser, sh just, just one, 
Um, I'm going to spend three threat here to give them two additional dice. And it appears that with those additional dice, I do succeed, but there is a complication. Interesting. Uh, okay, so what happens is the Latinum's Lure fires out with its phaser banks hitting you, and it is going to do a grand total of... Your resistance is seven, because you have a blade of armor, correct? Correct. All right. All right. So it takes off four of that. So you take a grand total of three damage, I believe. And the complication is going to be that, uh, and this would be something uh, Vassar and Lee Tobin would notice, is that they maybe dumped a little too much power into that phaser shot. But it is now the player's turn again. Rats will go ahead and start moving. Quick, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, on the ship's care on the ship sheet itself, mm -hmm. um, on the talents themselves, it says that we have a blade of armor and improved hull integrity, and next to it in parentheses, it says 18 total resistance. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. Eight total resistance. Let me check. Yeah, you would have eight, so you would have only taken two damage. Done. Anyway, Rast, you were saying. Uh, Rast is going to start moving to the other uh, to the uh, other bridge. Okay, and that's your minor action. What are you doing for your actual action? Um, he will ask. The, he will ask the captain if uh, if we're going to go ahead and separate, and he can initiate that. Yes. All right. He'll initiate. He'll initiate that. All right, so I'll pop it up on the screen so people at home can see. That's going to require a, a control and a con. And the ship will assist you with a computer con. The difficulty is two. I'll spend the momentum. Okay. The last thing we need to do is fail this. <laughs> it is rather important you succeed on this. I can roll, I can roll for the ship. Okay. Computer con, you said? You got it. See if you can get us that momentum back. Computer con. The ship doesn't have any focuses. Oh, uh, ship always has a focus. Oh, well then. Hey, look nice. at that. So <laughs> you end up getting two momentum as the Fenrir, uh, as we see in the intro, splits apart the upper part of the saucer section coming up and then the remaining secondary and tertiary holes splitting apart and they all swoop out and take up a, uh, shall we say, a attack formation. And I just have to put the tokens down. So there's alpha, there's gamma, and then there's beta. And what I would say is that your shield damage will persist across uh, each section. So each section has its own shields, but they're going to start at 12. And that is your uh, helm action, which means the Ferengi get to go again. And what they're going to do is get in right up into your face. They surge forward, closing the distance between all three sections and ending up right about there. And I would say Vassar and Williams, you see a power buildup in that energy dampening weapon. Rangi energy dampeners coming online. But it is now the player's turn again. Which I believe means either Matic, Rast, or, or no, sorry, either Matic or Lee at this point. Uh, I haven't done anything yet either. Yeah, William hasn't William. done oh, yet. Correct, correct. Fire on that port shield generator. Sure, we can. Then we can beam a quantum torpedo over. Yeah. Which which section am I 
firing from? I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, from Alpha. So, just so you know, uh, firing at this range, it would normally be a difficulty of two. But because it is close range, it goes up by one. So it is a difficulty three, control security, assisted by the ship's weapon security. Okay, I'm going to spend a point of momentum. Okay. And this is alpha section? This is alpha section, but before you do any rolling, do you want to coordinate with the other two ships? Now what that means is that they will not get their own attacks. They will attack on the same turn, the same action. But you get even more piercing if you do this. You guys think? I would agree yeah. with coordinating. All right, well, we'll do that. All right, so just so you know, that means you are granted piercing five. So you want to see effects. So rolling would be rolling for the full ship and not just a section? Uh, all of the ships, the only reason we split them into character sheets is because they have different power and shields. All of their stats should be the same. Okay. Yeah. So that okay. was a computers. Uh, no, it was a uh, weapon security from the ship and a control security from Williams. I'll roll for the ship. That's three successes. That's all you need. Another two from the ship, yes. which means you have a floating momentum. Um, let's spend that on additional piercing. Okay. I'd probably wait until you see what your dice roll is. Yeah, possibly yeah. do the reroll piercing. Oh, and also we can dump those momentum into killing its power. It's already lost a great deal due to the complication. Mm -hmm. Now this time you would be rolling uh, the alpha sections phaser arrays, which I believe are what I think seven. Yeah, seven. So seven challenge die. All right, so that is a total of piercing 10, 8 damage. Do you want to do anything with the roll, or do you want to keep it? Remember, you do have the one floating momentum. Yeah, let's just take a look at the momentum spins here real quick. Mm -hmm. Pommel those shield generators. Um Yeah, any, any suggestions, folks? Uh, so wait, what does piercing give us again? That just So two... piercing ignores resistance because you rolled two effects. That's five resistance off for each effect. Okay, so we're ignoring 10 resistance. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't have that much resistance. Um, I'd say just do fucking all seven into power loss. Make them fucking lose all their power. Well, yeah. let's, let's do that then. Okay. Let's dump them all. So, uh, reminiscent of the episode of Voyager where we see the USS Prometheus as the three parts of the Fenrir split apart and begin, begin in an attack formation Omega, uh, we see the Fenrir Alpha section swooping low, firing up from underneath the Latinum's lure. The Gamma section swoops off to the right, and firing and focusing on that port uh, port shield array that was found out earlier to be weaker. And then Beta comes in and fires with its arrays coming from over top of the Latinum's lure. And what this means is that not only do you pierce directly through the shields, causing a significant amount of damage, but you also cause a great amount of power loss as you come out the other side. Now, this does cause a breach for them. So, because it could matter, uh, Williams, I need you to roll me a system hit, please, using the macro. Sure. All right, they're computers. Uh, so what this means is that their computers are down, but they are still able to fire weapons. And they have a high enough security score that they can fire twice around. So, I'm going to spend some threat here quite a bit of it, to say that this energy dampening weapon will have an area effect if I roll effects on damage. I will also spend more threat, so I have two threat remaining after all this, 
um, to say that I'm going to give them two additional dice. So let's see what happens. Okay, so turns out I didn't need to give them additional dice. Uh, that is quite a number. In fact, I think I get threat back from that because, yeah, that's two, three, four, five, seven successes. And that is a lot of effects. That is a lot of effects. Oh, dear. So, uh, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> the Frankie do it again. Uh, so, all sections <laughs> of the ship, all what? sections of the ship, you all lose power. All of you. What? And you take a grand total of, because that's piercing one on every single one, you what? all take... 10 damage. What? So, what that Neural means, interface damage? Say again? Neural interface damage as yeah, well? Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. I have to roll one breach for each ship. Alright, so I'm going to start with Gamma. And then I'm going to go to Alpha. Then I'm going to go to Beta. So Alpha, or sorry, Gamma. You take a hit to Structure. I'll roll for that in a second. Alpha, you take a hit to structure. I'll roll that for a moment. Beta, so Rast, your section goes incommunicado. <laughs> all right, so now we have to roll all the effects. All right, so for Sar, here's your stress damage. You just take another two stress. You're fine. This is for the structure on the gamma section. Okay, that means someone on gamma is getting hurt. And then for Alpha, someone is not getting hurt. So... Gamma section. I'm going to say that the gamma section injury is actually going because Matic, you're in engineering, which is in I, gamma I would, section. I would, I would probably have passed engineering off to somebody else and then taken the bridge. Of gamma section, though, is what I'm getting. Right. At. Right. So I think you're getting injured, and Matic, you are lethally injured, which means someone has to come and medical you again. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. And, yeah, you guys are without any power on any what? section of the ship. So, we come back to the player's turn. And I believe, Lee, you're the only one that can act right now. Because Matic, until someone Matic. gets to Matic, he can't yes. act. Uh, could I attempt a power management task to restore power? You can, but it's only going to affect Alpha section. Yes. Wouldn't okay. it also affect Gamma? Beta's the only one out of comms. I would allow it to affect Gamma and Beta, not so much. So that is a reason and engineering task with a difficulty of two. And uh, I do have a focus in warp engines. So I would let that, that happen. But I believe since power is at zero, or is that for shields? No, it's only for shields. Okay, yes. And it can be either daring or control plus engineering. So whichever is better. Okay. So I'm going to give you one threat to buy an extra die. Okay. And I will go for daring and engineering. Okay. Three dice and an applicable focus. That is a significant number of successes, four successes, which means you get two momentum. And I can spend... A momentum to get another two power, right? Uh, uh, no, plus one power per momentum. Yeah, it's one per momentum. What do you think? Do you want to spend those two momentum on acquisition of more power, or we can get back up and running? We can get back in the fight. Shield. The sh get the shield. Get the shield back up. Yeah. Salvo. So I think that uh, I will spend those two momentum on extra power for both gamma and alpha. Okay, so Alpha and Gamma go to three power. So we come back around, because that's everyone. So Matic, uh, looking at the list here of who is in Gamma section, um, I think the only person that can come save you is Zeke. <laughs> so Zeke, <laughs> you are on the bridge, and... Matic gets hit with a ceiling tile because that is the obviously injury of choice here on the Fenrir. How do you respond, Zeke? That wouldn't hurt me at all. 
Um, uh, Mr. Matic, uh, crap. Uh, hold on. I think they got a little med kit over here. Um, I really don't know how to use these kit. things. Uh, it's not made for my hands. <laughs> it's too small. Uh, <laughs> computer, give me a medical readout of, of Maddox's condition. What do I do? You need to close the injury located, and it reads out basically how to treat him. It's going to be a control medicine, difficulty of two. But you did give me some threat. I'm going to make the complication range with all my threat. I'll spend all my threat here. The complication range is a 17 to 20. Maddox, Uh-oh. I don't know what you Damn. did to take him off. But... Trying to kill you. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just giving... He's finally, he's finally had enough of it. <laughs> Not playing Jeez. last week. No, nah, this is this is honestly payback for all the times I say yes to his harebrained ideas because he knows I can do this to him. So, mm. so what's the what's the medicine roll? Uh the medicine roll is emergency medicine. But this is an activation for Zeke, so you could give him a new focus or a talent or even um, a value. Can't you also increase their disciplines and attributes, or no? You or can. That's, that's something else. Well, you can, but you can only do that once per character. Right. Ever. Like a um, field surgery focus. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him a focus of uh, combat triage. Sure. Although I would say that's not going to affect you because your metal medicine score is one. This so is you'd still true. be hitting yeah. Yeah, you'd on still the same have, one. Yeah, you'd still get a, a two successes so on a one regardless. So. Yep. You could go for a value that you could then tap to use a determination. Uh, that can be, oh crap, oh crap. <laughs> um, this ain't a transporter. <laughs> this yes, is value. I'm, <laughs> I'm a transporter chief, not a blank. Yeah, there you go. I'm a transporter chief, not a blank. I love it. I'm a transporter chief, not a medic. Um, but you said it's a medicine what? Medicine and control. Okay, so control... Medicine. Uh, I don't have any focuses here, but. And it is difficulty of two. Uh, Do I have any momentum? You have two. Can I use one for an additional dice? You certainly can. What's the difficulty? Only a two. Oh my god. Control. Roll with the new character. Medicine, 3D20, and uh, Prey. Hey, look at that. Very nice. So, yeah, uh, you actually get two momentum back. And, Matic, you wake up on the floor of the bridge looking up at the lovely face of Zeke. Hey, welcome back to the land of the living. Now get your ass back in the chair and help us out. We're going to die. <laughs> Uh, Matic just kind of blinks a couple times, um, looks around and takes a deep breath, gets, stands up with, uh, Zeke's help and then gets back in the chair. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is the end of, oh no, the Ferengi do get a turn. They are going to attempt to scan for weakness on beta section. Oh God. Which they no see that. The weakness is they have no power. <laughs> what? We're gonna die. Nah, just beta. Alright. So, it is now the top of the initiative order. The Fenrir crew can act. So, which among you would care to act? I'll rally again. I would I say... I would say we might want to scan for weaknesses and then pay new, two momentum to retain the initiative in order to attack mm-hmm. and see if we can't knock out the rest of its power because if it fires off that energy dampening weapon again, all of our ships are going to be sitting. How much momentum do we have? Three. Three. Two? Okay, yeah. That's better. So who would like to do the scan for weaknesses? I think that's uh, you're more talented at that. Okay, control science. Mm-hmm. We've got three momentum. Did we want to use any of that for dice, or are we doing use something one. else with that? I'd right, use I, one. I use one. That gives us two left. Uh, 
Zeke does not have any focuses for this, so. Oh, oh no, 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 Vassar. Uh, Vassar. 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 Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm rolling Vassar. Sorry. I am rolling Vassar. <laughs> Vassar does not have a focus on this either. Whew. All right. Uh, so, crossing fingers. Hey, that's two successes, which means you get one momentum, and the ship hasn't even rolled that. So, yeah, sensor security from the ship, please. Anybody want to grab that? I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, is it from the ship itself or from Alpha? It They're the same stat. Okay. Uh, sensor security? Yep. Sensor security. Survey says... Another success, another point of momentum. Very nice. And then we'll spend two momentum to retain the initiative. Yep, which will bring you down to three momentum again. And if I understand correctly, you're having Williams opening fire, correct? Yeah. Uh, what was the weakness we discovered, by the way? The weakness that you discovered is that now that you've attacked the port side shield generator, uh, that has caused a influx of power to overload the... Uh, underside of one of the what? What's the underneath the um, ventral? Ventral. Thank you. The ventral side of the latinum's lure. The shield generator on the aft ventral side is currently flickering in and out. And if you time your shot just right, all right, Commander Williams. I believe if you target their aft. Their ventral aft shield generator. We can disable the shields on most of the ship, and it will be, as they say, easy pickings. Understood. All right. Well, oh, here we go. Uh, all right, so I'll go ahead and, and uh, fire, uh, fire the phasers. Okay. Now again, this is a uh, control security difficulty of three, assisted by the ship's weapon security. You cannot have beta help you, but you can have gamma help you, and that would bring your total piercing to a piercing of four. Yep, I think we're I think we're gonna do that. Okay. And uh, you should use the three momentum just for extra dice. You also have augmented ability control. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and. I've also got um, fire at will. So if I make a, a phaser attack and use a swift action momentum spin to attack again, I ignore the increased difficulty. Ooh. So we potentially um, have the ability to get some additional damage in there. Mm -hmm. But you would have to still spend the two momentum to swift task. Yeah, mm. that's the thing. Otherwise we can... Yeah, just use one momentum for the extra die and the, the two for the swift task. All right. Let's do that. All right, that's an, a ship from this, or an assist from the ship. And that is four successes from Williams. So that's five successes. You get two momentum right back. All right, Williams, that's seven challenge dice, please. You want to see effects here. That is a number of effects, but unfortunately uh, not enough for a breach. Can we re roll the three point? zeros? Yeah, spend the point two, re roll the three zeros. Mm -hmm. There you go. Very Holy nice. cow. Okay. So, a lot of effects. That is. <laughs> now, what I would say is you have the opportunity here to either knock out its shields or knock out its power. Oh, power. I think power. Power. Is what we power. Want, yeah. Okay. So what happens here is the shield generators buckle yet again and allow a power surge to pass through the ship. And what I would say is that the Latinum lure uh, begins to sort of drift and spiral from the force of the attack as Alpha and Gamma uh, basically go to either side in a flanking maneuver and come back around in a pincer formation and open fire on the uh, aft section of the Latinum's Lure. And as a result, the Latinum's Lure sort of spins end over end past beta section, which is also sort of doing the same sort of listing, you know, sort of off to the side there. Um, but essentially, um, what's going to have to happen then is do you continue firing or do you let it be the Ferengi's turn? Wait. 
What do you what do you think? Um I would say one more shot to give one cripple more. their one more shot to cripple their power systems. Mm-hmm. And then we can negotiate. Uh Williams, your take. And I think each of our sections is down but to two power, right? Yes. Okay. Except me. <laughs> we'll get to you later. All right. Well let's yeah, I mean, let's, let's screw it. Let's spend the two spend two momentum, okay, uh, to get another attack. Yep, another difficulty three control security. Cool. And with that one momentum, I'm going to go ahead and buy an additional die. As okay. Three twenty. What focus? All right. So that is three successes with your augmented uh, control, but that is a complication as well. Sure and is. I think I have exactly in mind what I want the complication to be. All right, go ahead and roll me seven challenge die. All right. Complication is Miss Matic gets blown out of a breach in the side of the hole. <laughs> Actually, it's worse than that. Oh, William spends two yeah. momentum to negate that complication. I would say you could give me, let me tell you what the complication is okay. and then I'll allow you to react to it and try to do an advantage to save something. Williams, you open fire a second time intent on severely crippling the vessel. What you don't account for though is the massive amount of, shall we say, illegal arms shipments that are in the cargo holds of the Latinum's Lure. So you hit it. And by all accounts, that's a good thing. But it has the side effect of igniting... Set off a magazine. Setting off the magazines, correct. So the Latinum's Lure, a ship of possibly 5,000 or more souls, begins to explode. Uh Uh-oh. You have one action as the players to do something before the Latinum's Lure explodes. And if it explodes, any ship that is still within close range will be taking a significant amount of damage. So... To sort of put it on the table here. You can either fly away, tractoring the beta section with you, or you can attempt to save Maddox's life. Well, Maddox's wife's Savious. life. Maddox's yes. life. Um, Captain, uh, Gamma section will cut off its communications. And uh, you'll see the tractor beam activate to try to pulsate the Latinum lures away. Okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> it's it. Okay. Um, I want to lower. Well, who has the most? Let me ask this because I think uh, there's two things that are going on here, and whether or not he gets to do it before Bree would is the question here. So Bree, what is your uh, what is your daring? Check. And Maddox, I'm gonna ask Nine. the same of you. What is yours? Ten. Okay. So I need you both to roll me, and technically you're just supposed to do it off daring, but I think it's more thematic if we roll for it. Maddox, roll me ten challenge die. Archuleta, roll me nine. Whoever has the most gets to act I like first. That. I like that. That's cool. I'm rolling nine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, Matic, before you can cut off communications and tractor the Latinum's lure away, what is it that Archuleta wants to do? She wants to lower the shields of Alpha where mm-hmm. she is and beam uh, Savia, Savia to the brig. To the brig. Okay. So... What I would say then, Matic, is this transport happens just fine. But the exploding Latinum's lure is going to do a number 
on the three sections of the Fenrir. And I'm basically treating this like a warp core breach. But because there is quite literally four reactors, I'm adding additional damage to this. So uh, what this does is initially a warp core breach, just for the folks at home, a warp core breach initially does three challenge dice worth of damage to all ships in close range. That's before you add the ship's scale. The ship's scale is a 7. So that's 10 challenge die worth of damage. So, let's see what I roll. Okay, this, this again might become important. All of you, including beta section, are going to take two breaches of your own as the Latinum's lure explodes and is no more. Let's roll to see what your system hits are. So this is for Gamma. Gamma, you take a hit to structure, so I gotta roll another challenge die. And to weapons. Alpha section, engines, and engines. Fear. Beta section, sensors, and structure. All right, so let's go through this. Rolling for Gamma, do I actually injure Matic again? No, no, no. God! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right. Do I injure Rast? I injure Rast. So, <laughs> Matic. And one more thing, neural interface on alpha section. Oh, my God. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Two, right? Okay, you're fine. You're fine. All right. That's, oh, you're fine. All right. So, what happens is, Matic, you get back in your chair. You see this happening. You, get, you go, oh, shit. And then your chair... <laughs> violently erupts and sends you flying through the air and Zeke he literally lands on your console Rast you do something similar on beta section but the good news is Alel is there mm -hmm. but before we end this scene we have to do some very important first aid rolls Zeke I need another control medicine and Alel I need a control medicine from you as well Difficulty of two for each of you. Emergency medicine. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Can I use momentum? You can. And I have exactly what I want. I know what I want to do with that complication. So, Rast, you wake up to see Alel above you. Matic, you wake up the second time. You can't feel your left arm. And when you look, oh. there is no left arm. Cyborg arm. <laughs> Biosynthetic arm. What a badass. <laughs> <laughs> Sarge, you can't feel my legs. That's because you ain't got no legs. <laughs> I mean, when, when you landed here, you had an arm, but in order to scan you, I had to take the arm off, so. Uh, <laughs> They're like so, chewing from the bone. <laughs> hopefully the good doctor can reattach it or. Damn. Damn. I'm going to spend the one thread I have remaining. The arm catches fire as sparks shoot on it. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Looks like I'm getting an upgrade. I'm so getting fired. I didn't mean that like a pun, but jeez. Yeah, if you ever do temporal stuff now, people are definitely going to know which Matic you are. <laughs> yeah. There's no sneakiness, no. Unless all future iterations of Matic that are currently in the past. You go into the past, chop happen. his arm off, take yes. it with you, and it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, just... like that, bit, that movie, The Prestige, where one of the Christian Bales gets his finger shot off, and so he hacks off the other one's fingers. To... Mm -hmm. um, scanning Alpha section for uh, medical emergencies and notifying the local uh, med bay. Okay. So, uh, we're actually going to cut 
to the brig a little bit after everything is sort of settled down. Um, what I would say as a point of order is make sure those breaches are noted on each section of the ship's sheets. Because since you took breaches to structure, you cannot reassemble the ship. Meaning you are stuck in multi-vector assault mode until you return to Stardock. Hmm. So that okay. might come into play moving forward but we're gonna cut to the brig and waiting for you in the brig is Savia as well as Miss Archer and I'm curious would it just be the captain there would Maddox be there as well um, I don't know Maddox you want to stop by in your yeah. current can he's he arm in a sling he's not on the same section he could beam over like the uh, the communications problem doesn't persist to uh, gamma section. It's only beta that's just sort of sitting there like help. OK, well, um, Bree isn't going to let him anyway, because okay. um, when Savia eventually gets out of whatever condition she's in. Yeah, don't want her to see that. So. All right. So, yeah, Commodore, you walk in, and Savia is on the other side of a force field. She's going to cut straight to the chase, um, Miss Archer. Very well. And Miss Archer sort of flips her hair a little bit, cracks her arms, cracks her neck, and says, All right, just like Boothby said, just like Boothby said, all right. D puts out her hand like she's <laughs> a force user, concentrates, furrows her brow, and just like what happened with you, Archuleta, a ethereal shape, an insectoid-like shape, is ripped from Savia's mind. And Savia cries out in pain, drops to one knee, and then Archer sort of holds the insectoid and looks to you, Archer, and says, what do I do with it? Kill it? Yes. Crushes it in her psychic grip. Thank you. And Archer just sort of nods her head and says, I will be over here if you need me. And she and the security officer go off to a corner and pretend they can't hear. Pretend. Okay. Um, Brie walks up to the force field. What is, like, Savia doing? Uh, she is panting very heavily, in pain, labored breaths. He goes, okay. Okay, I'm me again. Ah. Uh, she looks around. Okay. I'm in the brig. Uh, Ca Captain C Commodore, is, is my husband all right? Did I blow him up? He'll be fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they grabbed me on the way back to DSD. Uh, I, I tried to do every, everything I could, but they they use the power packs to boost the the transporter signal and there's a lot I don't understand. Bree will drop the brig. Force okay. field. Force field comes down. Um so put a hand on her shoulder and be like, I know how it feels. And I can't promise it'll be okay, but it'll be better. Yeah, any anything's better than what I just went through. And yeah, uh, I tell you what, looking at the time, I think that's a perfect way to end our session Ooh. tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking around. We had a uh, tremendous turnout tonight. Thank you, the uh, Kobold Army, for showing up. Thank you for everyone who stuck around this long. Uh, we are going to cut the stream here. So Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much. And we will see these folks later. Bye stream. Thank you.